Hello, hello. All right. Six years ago, I remember sitting in a car after a wrestling tournament in which I got eliminated the first two rounds. This was the third time in a row that I went to a tournament and lost every single match. I had been on the wrestling team for four years, so, you know, I thought I would experience some success in competitions, but no. So there I was sitting in a car with my brother. I was basically crying the entire ride home. I thought about the time and effort I put into wrestling and how nothing was working out for me. Then I reflect on my other experiences with sports. In football, I played a total of 10 minutes the entire season. That's 10 minutes in seven or eight games. I vividly remember our last game where our team was going crazy and celebrating the win while I walked to the car just sobbing because, because the coach didn't put me in at all that game. In basketball, I scored a total of zero points. In baseball, I batted last and was a second string right fielder. I also remember our last game. It was my final time at bat, and I struck out to make my season, an, to make my season officially an all-strikeout season. Just to make matters worse, I was also a really shy kid in school and had academic reports and grades that, that weren't very good. I even remember testing not proficient in English on the New York State ELA exam back then. So yeah, you can imagine how much worse I felt, how much worse I felt after all that reflecting. I look at my brother who was sitting beside me, at the time, he recently took third in New York State and a bunch of great schools like Duke and Wesleyan were interested in him. I started thinking things like, why am I not naturally talented or naturally smart? And was I just born without the right genetics to be successful at things? Doubts that anything good will happen in my life just flooded my mind. So after I cried and after I reflected, my brother finally broke the silence. He told me, it's going to be okay. It's good to get your book kicked that badly, even if it happens two or three tournaments in a row. These hard defeats will come, and when they do, they'll help you in the long run. I had absolutely no idea what he meant. How does losing help you succeed? How does constantly getting beat up help you? I thought about it, it made no sense to me, but I took it to heart because I trusted him. After that car ride, I didn't know what to expect. I, just, I enjoyed wrestling, so I kept working at it and having fun. Over the next few months, I learned to work hard, I listened to the advice of my Edgemont and club coaches, and I kept seeing gradual improvement. And now, just six years after that depressing car ride, I'm a two-time All-State athlete, a New York State champion, I've won numerous Wrestler of the Year awards, and I became an All-American, meaning that I placed top eight at nationals. In academics, I have a 4.0 unweighted high school GPA, had the highest grades in the school in numerous science and math classes, and did well on my standardized tests. I got recruited by basically every top-tier school that had wrestling and chose Harvard. What I didn't know back then was how much athletics would end up impacting my life. I only thought it would teach me the value of hard work and, and maybe teamwork, but oh, I was so wrong. So I list these accomplishments today and talk about my story, not for me to brag about my achievements or to make you feel sorry for me when I was a child or, or anything. No, I'm here today to show you the impact that sports have had on every aspect of my life, with the hopes that maybe you can take away something from my experiences. The first theme that I will be talking about is the importance of gradual improvement. I know this is something you've probably heard many, many times before, but just bear with me. Success is hugely dependent on the amount of hard work and time you put into it. A big phrase that resonates with me is, it's not easy, but it's simple. It may sound too straightforward to think that hard work leads to success, and I lived under that impression my whole childhood. I would always make excuses based on talent, natural athletic ability, and natural smarts. My wrestling improved so much when I just ignored those things and started to dedicate myself. As time went on, I was beating people, very talented people, who I thought I would never be able to surpass. Seeing those small, incremental improvements just add up made me realize that it's so simple and that I'm in full control. I learned this lesson of gradual improvement through wrestling, but I feel like anyone can do it within a matter of weeks. It starts, it starts with your body and physical fitness more than anything. Uh, try getting your mile time down a minute, or complete a half marathon, or lose six pounds. Whatever it is, just consistently work at it, and you inevitably will be able to do it. You're going to realize that it doesn't take natural athletic ability or anything like that. If you apply this mindset to a bunch of things, this amazing feeling of, of confidence and control will explode into every aspect of your life. 
Another mindset shift that helped me early on was to stop comparing myself to other people. Frequently in my career, I encountered feelings of inadequacy and, on the other side, arrogance when I compared myself to people in the wrong way. Life is about striving for your personal best. Take a look at the slogan of my club wrestling team, Iowa Style Wrestling. We believe that an individual is successful when he continually commits to close the gap between his performance and his potential, and when he understands that such a commitment represents a way of life, not merely a means to an end. On that note, I genuinely take the most pride, not in the accolades themselves particularly, but the almost disbelief that I have looking back to where I was in elementary and middle school compared to now. Everybody starts somewhere, and complaining about how other people are better than you will just make you feel inadequate for no good reason. And that's why you don't have to be an Olympic gold medalist or score perfect on every test to be happy. You set your own goals and gradually work towards them. Over time, you'll see these incremental improvements just pile up, and those impossibilities that you hold in your mind before will be completely in reach. It's your job to keep pushing the limits for what you believe is possible, for yourself, and that's all that matters. So there are two points to remember from this theme. One, success is so simple. And two, don't feel inadequate and be the best that you can be. The second theme that I will be talking about is having fun. Ever since eighth grade to mid-junior year, I held this false belief that success was constantly about being in the zone while not really focusing on enjoyment. I'm not kidding when I say that I barely spoke or smiled my entire sophomore year, um, whether it be in school or in, or in wrestling, just because I was always serious. As a result of being in this mood day in and day out, I performed a lot below my potential and even considered quitting after that year, just because I was having a terrible time. When junior year started and as it went on, I realized that the more I enjoyed being at practice, the way more I improved. I learned to get excited for practice, joke around, change things up as much as I could, and live in the moment, all while improving and being focused. Even in things like conditioning, you know, I, I just keep a smile on my face and have fun knowing that I'm pushing myself to the limit. When you want to be somewhere, you're going to take so much more out of it. This same mindset carried over for competitions. Before this shift in mentality, I would get insanely nervous and stressed out before a match. You could probably relate to this feeling when your body and mind go completely numb before you even step out to compete, take a test, or whatever it is. After this mindset shift, I didn't get nervous at all. I learned to just go out there and compete with a clear mind, live in the moment, and just have fun. There's no point stressing out because all you're doing in a competition is exactly what you practiced. My results in the sport escalated so quickly after this mindset shift. So you may be asking, why is this all relevant? Because I applied this mindset to so many other things from taking tests to public speaking to being more confident, whatever it is. For example, my attitude towards taking a test. I used to freak out before one. Now I joke around before a huge exam, and I go into every test saying that I've studied the material, so I'll just keep calm and enjoy it. Even something as big as public speaking, what I'm doing right now. Most people get insanely nervous before something like this. But right now, I'm not nervous because I tell myself that I prepared a ton for this talk, and right now I'm living in the moment and, and having a good time. If you implement this attitude to all those big events that you have in your life, you'll perform so much better and it'll just feel great. So on to my second point about having fun. The attitudes that I described above work so much better if you are doing something that you genuinely enjoy doing day in and day out. If you aren't excited at least 80% of the time to go to class or go to practice, then you're probably in the wrong activity or you have the wrong mindset. I'm excited to go to practice every day. Even if I just take two days off of wrestling, I actually start to miss it, and my body like, almost tells my mind that it wants to go wrestle. Furthermore, my best accolades, by far, came after I got into college showing that I didn't wrestle to be accepted into a good university or, or anything like that. No, I did it because I genuinely love doing it. In school, I'm never dreading the weekdays or only looking forward to that time when the clock hits 3 p.m. on a Friday. No, I'm that weird guy who says that he likes all his classes and enjoys being there. My friends who all do the best in school say they, they enjoy being there and enjoy improving and cultivating their minds. So to sum it up for this theme, when you're in a big event, don't be nervous and just live in the moment. Tell yourself that you're doing exactly what you studied or, or practiced for. There's no need to stress out. And two, 
Find and do the things that you can't live without. Every day and every activity should be exciting. My final theme is about perseverance. No matter how much fun you have doing your sport or activity, to get to the highest level, there will probably be times when you feel awful and feel like you just want to throw it all away. For me, this was the end of sophomore year. All season long, I'd kept the goal of Allstate front and center in my mind and worked relentlessly towards it. States finally came, and in my first match, we went into overtime. We were both extremely exhausted, but I pushed through the pain and scored a point. But what happened next would end up haunting me for a long time. With just four seconds left, my opponent scored a reversal, which is two points, and won the match. I still vividly remember that final buzzer going off and that feeling of pain and, and pure sadness that accompanied it. However, I still had the courage to fight back after that. I won a few matches, and then I found myself in the blood round, where if you win, you get all state. If you lose, you're out. The match went into the final period, tied, and in the last 30 seconds, my opponent scored two points due to a stupid mistake that I made, and I lost. I just laid there on the mat, hands on my face, just devastated. Two people who I was completely capable of beating got all state, and I didn't. And then, just to make it all fall down, about three weeks after, at sophomore nationals, I was two matches away from being an All-American, and then, yet again, I lost an extremely close match. The immense weight of these, of these three losses just completely broke me. Just thinking about all the time and effort I put into wrestling, and coming so close to reaching every single one of my goals, and then ultimately failing, made me lose myself. I cried for an hour, every night, for a week after Nationals. So, yeah, th this was my rock bottom. What felt like an eternity went by before I recovered. Something that really helped me a lot was reflecting back to that car ride back in sixth grade and, say, and seeing how I overcame that obstacle of hopelessness in my life. I started to read about a ton of success stories, and eventually I realized that success, that, that everybody experiences a lot of failure. But the difference that determines success lies in whether we constantly get up and keep going or not. This quote from Rocky Balboa really put it clear to me. Life isn't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Those events at states and nationals, in my experience afterwards, ingrained in me an attitude of perseverance that was crucial to later successes. because. Contrary to popular belief, it wasn't a straight upwards path after that. I suffered much more devastating defeats in academics and in athletics junior year. My club coach, John Deagle, even said to me, you are the person who failed the most and failed the most painfully, but constantly persisted to become one of the best. So my point is, don't do what I did sophomore year and become depressed after facing a lot of hard losses. Learn to stop worrying about losing. And every time it happens, get up, don't be upset and continue enjoying yourself. After this attitude of perseverance got ingrained in my head, I would always tell myself that if I tried my hardest and lost, it doesn't matter at all because I did everything I could. You take pride in that fight and you'll just shrug off that loss and continue improving and, and having fun. So you will feel that rock bottom at times, but just, but just realize that everybody fails a lot and that you aren't unlucky or anything. Every time you fail, learn from your mistakes, get up, and continue enjoying yourself. To finish up here, the three themes of gradual improvement, having fun, and perseverance highlight the crucial lessons that I've learned from wrestling. Find the work and activities that you can't live without. Every day and every activity should be exciting. And when you're doing those things, realize that success is so simple and that it just takes time and effort. Keep up that constant improvement and continually throw away those impossibilities that you hold in your mind. But realize that failure will happen a lot, but the difference that determines success lies in whether we constantly get up and keep going or not. Furthermore, when you're in a big event, just take away the stress and live in the moment. There's no need to be nervous. And finally, have fun and make every day exciting. Thank you all very much.